how do you manage it? So with 45 staff, two to three days in, two to three days out, do they have to sort of clock in, clock out? How, how, how does it work? Or they just let you know on the day? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's quite difficult to manage, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, we're, we're ho hopeful that people are using their common sense. Right. So, um, and now we've, you know, we, we've got managed there. If people um, are uh, pushing the boundaries, then, then of course we have to we have to rein it in a little bit and just go right. Just to be clear, because uh, the the other thing that you don't want to do is is turn people into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday people. So then they have Monday and Friday at home, and then they just it feels like they have a four day weekend. So, and I'm not saying that they don't work on the Monday and Friday, but it's four days of solidly not being in the office. So, so we do mix it up. Um, you you can't have people doing the same days every week for uh, over six months. Otherwise, it becomes an inferred part of their contract. Okay. So, uh, so you have to mix up, you know, what days people do come into the office and make sure it doesn't stay the same. And and, uh, and obviously, so then they get to see different people on different days as well. So um, it just gives a, a bit of a di different dynamic of not having those people in on those days and those people in on those days, and and then they they almost don't cross over. So, Mark, one of the one of the things I wanted to ask you is about managing performance within not just your company in general now for and in the IT channel because I'm seeing a lot of. Um, leaders in the IT channel now struggling with managing people effectively to either get them into the into the office or manage them in terms of numbers. And what do I mean by that? So I'm not saying give people the hair dryer treatment, but almost you can't say nothing now, yeah. it seems, to your staff without them saying they're off with anxiety and they might be genuine yeah. or they're off with depression, which again might be genuine, or you're putting pressure on them or they've got mental health issues, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. I have, I, I'm hearing lots of stories now. It's very difficult to know what's genuine and what's not. So what's your view on trying to manage performance if it's if it's not going well and you're trying to manage underperformance and yet you've got you've got people in your company or or in, in, in the IT channel in general maybe bending the system or using the system a bit? What, what's your view on that? Yeah, I mean, and it's entirely possible, um, and it is really, really difficult because uh, I, I think that, especially over the last probably five or so years, the mental health um, has definitely um, come to the forefront. So um, when I remember my um, days of working um, in, in the heating company, and I was the you know the fresh face, eighteen, nineteen year old, and then you had these older guys there that were just rinsing me to death. Um, mm. a, in whatever way, shape, or form, um, uh, you know, I was the butt of their banter, and you just had to suck it up. It was, you know, there wasn't a, oh, I'm, I'm not feeling too great about what you've just well, said. You'd have there. been laughed at, wouldn't oh, you? Oh yeah, hundred percent. If you'd have, yeah. if you'd have turned around and said to someone, oh, you're affecting my mental health, they'd have just told you to get out. Well, they, exactly. They, yeah. they, they, this wouldn't happen. Exactly. So what, 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 how do you manage it now? Because it's, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's the the, the, the default card, but no. I think it's very difficult for companies now to work out if it, if it's genuine or not. Yeah, I mean, you do, and, and that's the thing, you do have to tread very lightly because um, it doesn't take much for somebody to go to a doctor. Um, and, and now typically doctors, a lot of um, you know practitioners aren't mental health trained. If you look at their six year um, their six year training that a lot of doctors will go through, typically they'll have two to four weeks worth of training on mental health. But somehow somebody can ring up and go, I've got this problem, this problem, this problem, and they and they uh, over the phone will give you a two week. You're signed off, um, and it, and it can and can be that easy. And um, so it it is easy to play the system, or it can be easy to play the system. So as managers, you've just got to be mindful of. The, the person who's there um, and, and, and hopefully the, you know they'll be open enough to explain the circumstances of what's happening but it's it's incredibly tough there's no you know I wish I had an answer to just go well yeah. you just do this and it's that easy but it is incredibly difficult with uh, especially with the state of the world I suppose we've just come out of COVID and now we're talking about the rising cost of things mm -hmm. you know there's still an ongoing war there's all this um, external pressures that are there on people's senses um, and some people will be affected by that more than others. So, and what's your view on sort of treating people as individuals? You know, lots of people, and I'd have been guilty of this myself. To be fair, that like we'd have had someone um, a few years back actually who who had childcare issues and would struggle to stay till half past five to to actually go and get their childcare. Yeah. And looking back now, I would have thought, Do you know what, I could have just said leave at five o'clock and go and get them, but I didn't. I actually let them carry on struggling in in, in terms of the time, which yeah. actually feels wrong at the time. How easy is it now for you to manage individuals with not being sort of biased to one or the other? Because yeah. you you want <laughs> you want everyone to be treated the or people want to be treated the same and think oh actually it's unfair if Joe Bloggs got this or if Jane Bloggs gets that. Yeah. 
But how do, how do you do that when everyone's got individual needs or if they want to work from Friday or you say, oh, I actually want to work from Christchurch on a Monday? Yeah. How do you, how do you, it's a minefield. How do you actually manage people now as individuals or, 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 or collectively show that you're not being unfair? Yeah. Um, I mean, typically what, what I see is that we, um, we, we, we are flexible across the day anyway. So, uh, um, so we, we, we will say to people, if you want to start early, you can finish early. So, um, so typically in their contract, it will say 8.45 start, 5.45 finish. Um, but in some cases, we'll say you can start at 8 and you can finish at 4.30. Or if you want to start 8.45, finish at 5.45, you can do that as well. So there is that flexibility in there. And then there's always going to be occasions where somebody will say, um, I need to do this or I need to um, go and pick them. You know, so then, then you have to manage by exception. It's when um, it's when the boundaries are being pushed, and then you can see that they're being pushed and pushed and pushed. And then again, you've got to say, we need to just rein this in a little bit because uh, um, it's so difficult. Though, it, it? it is difficult because, of course, what's the one word that people don't want to hear? It's no. Mm -hmm. I, I need to I need to go and pick my new washing machine up. No, you can't do that because oh, but uh, and then it's uh, and the other thing that I've seen um, definitely since COVID is that the rate of um, illness has dropped off massively because a lot of people go, I'm not feeling very well. I just work from home today. That seems to be so, you know, something that's developed over the last few years. So, yeah. so now um, rather than getting SSP on their pay, they'll just work from home and they'll just work. Um, so that, that's, that's another challenge that people have got in, in if you're real in, you know, in, in the old days, I suppose you would say, no, if you're real, don't come to the office, take the day off and get better. Um, whereas now people go, I feel ill, but I can, I'm well enough to work through. I'm just not well enough to come to the office. So again, it's a challenge. Yeah, and how do you do that? Because I'm, I'm, I'm hearing again things like, I'm working from home. I'm getting a parcel delivered. I'm working from home. I've got a dentist appointment. I'm working from home. I've got yoga. I'm working from home. I don't feel <laughs> ill. So yeah. they never take any holiday. Yeah. And then, or I'll get it where I actually, I've said this a few times on a podcast. I've had a, a candidate come up to us and say, uh, not luckily not working for us, but they're saying um, uh, the school holidays, I'm working for my Bayer for six weeks. Mm. Well, you can't see customers. Well, yeah, but I will be on, I'll be remotely working. It's like, how do you man, how, you know, how do companies now manage these different scenarios that are coming up um, without them basically saying that someone's taking the piss? Someone's yeah, actually yeah. just, you know, they're, they're never taking any holiday and they're having 30 days like work from home to do, yeah. Chores. Yeah, and, and I suppose that there's the thing is uh, um, is when you've got businesses that are out there that are going, um, okay, we will offer this flexibility. We can yeah. do that, um, and then um, as soon as you as soon as you open that envelope, then uh, and I, I remember hearing this actually when um, when we were trying to get a few people back during um, lockdown, and we were saying to them, right, you need to start coming back to the office now. And then one of the things we heard a few times was, well, my friends don't have to go to the office, and then there's part of you wants to go, well you're not working with your friends you don't work for that business you work for us so so if we're saying that you've got to do this why why does what your friends do matter to us um but that is the mentality that some people can have is that because other people in other businesses have got this then therefore that means that we should think about it as well and of course it just it's not practical to do that in every single scenario what do you, is there, is there an answer for it is there how, how how do you think people can manage it because there'll be lots of channel firms listening to this thinking do you know what <clears throat> I've got people, some some people, some some staff members don't want to come into the office. To maybe and maybe it's because they want to send they want to save travel fares or whatever. And I get that. Yeah. And that's fine. And some people are just saying, actually, do you know what? I never want to work at home from Fridays because they want to go to the pub or whatever they want to do. How do you manage it as a collective business when if actually they're underperforming, you need to get them either back in the office or managing their performance? How do you actually manage that? It's a minefield. Yeah. I mean Typically, we don't. Um, I, th I think we're we're in a place where uh, we we do say to people, "This is this is our expectation," um, and then there'll be one to one conversation. So, so we're not we're not, I suppose, driven by people's demands to say, "I want to work from Marbella for six weeks," or "I don't want to come in on a Friday," or or you know, we'll we'll always look for some sort of consultation here. Is um, it, as much as we'll say we need this as a minimum. Um, and then there's the flexibility that comes with it, but it's not um, it's not driven by, uh, I suppose, the employee. If the employee wants to say, "I need this, this, and this," if it, if it doesn't fit, well, okay, well then then you need to find somewhere else that will fit that for you. It's um, and and people obviously at the moment have the opportunity to vote with their feet. But as we were talking about at lunch, the you know this is all um, you know goes through cycles. Um, you know, at some point it's <coughs> it's weighed heavily in the um, employer. At the moment, it's with the employee. 
there'll be a time when that comes back again and and it's um you know coming back to what employees are looking for is a career um and you know you can't keep jumping from place to place to place because you feel that you're going to get a better perk there because that won't help your career long term yeah and what what, what's your view on for for west coast cloud you know on an attraction and retention because there's lots of people at the moment they've got lots of choices the candidate is king at the moment um, all channel companies are trying to look for people and they're struggling to find people, but also keeping your good people because they're being attacked by sexy vendors out there or other companies that are offering ridiculous packages. How do you deal with it at West Coast Cloud in terms of attraction and also retaining your best people? Yeah. Uh, by and large, we do it by making sure that the, pe- the people that we've got in senior positions have been with us for a while and have had the opportunity to work up to where they are. This is all about internal um, you know, encouragement, and, and growth. Um, so we we very rarely um, do senior uh, recruits, I say never, but um, we'd much rather see whether someone internally can can develop into a role rather than um, go and get someone externally to do that. So, and I think that for the other people that then join the, the business subsequently, they can see the stories of some of these people that we've got and say, I want that to be me. I want I want to be the next, that person or that person or that person. And, and I think that there's the, the proof has to be in the pudding because again, when people start, um, they, they typically will be on a, a more junior role. Um, again, not always, but but they see the opportunities to, uh, you know, our service desk, for example, we can use as a feeder team to go, right, I start off on service in the service desk, which is, um, you know, one of the lower paid areas of the business typically. And then they can develop into the modern workplace team, the, the dynamics team, the the Azure team, and then you know, I've got I've got a lady that was in our service desk team eighteen months ago. You know, almost um, well, she has doubled her salary in our Azure team, and she's absolutely flying. Brilliant. Um, and and success that, story. Yeah, and and that's in eighteen months. Um, you know, the guy that runs our service desk team, he's twenty two, um, joined us at nineteen, and then you go, right, well, he sounds a bit young to be running. Age is irrelevant. He's got the right mindset. He's got the right drive. Um, he's got the right style with the people that he's managing. He's got the right gravitas to so it's it's irrelevant if someone's got that capability then they they can see that you know, you know the opportunity is there for them and talk about opportunities from your perspective you know why is diversity such a key consider uh, sorry a key consideration for the channel now because there is hardly any people in the channel who have got experience looking it's, it's there's a real shortage but there's a real lack of trying to get people from other industries coming in so yeah. What's your view on diversity? You know, is that is that a key consideration for you at West Coast? Um, I mean, it's it's a consideration, as in, um, and, and I, you know, I, I always want to be careful about what how I say this because I really don't care um, what background you come from, what ethnicity you are, what sex you are. It makes no difference to me. It's all about your capability. And um, you know, I mean, we, we just recruited for um, a couple of roles recently. Um, and, and the service desk is, is, a, is a prime one of this. We'll get 10 candidates and we'll be lucky if we get one woman that will apply for it. Yeah. So, the, so therefore, you know, the, what's the chances of that woman? Well, she's got one in 10 and you've got nine guys. They've got a nine in 10 chance. So um, so it's, it's about getting more, um, I, I suppose, more people in uh, early doors that, that are being trained. So when they go to college or, when, when, you know, when there's a career that's there, um, because uh, I go back to the lady that, that's joined our Azure team. She's she's equally as capable as anybody else in that team, um, and you know, in, in some cases, you know, she she can shine more than they can because she's got a different mindset. So, uh, and that's what you want is that diversity of thinking, um, um, yeah. and and the different the different approach that people have. But it's just, you know, there's not enough people coming along for the for the interviews, um, and you don't just want to be quota filling. You don't want to say, well. Well, actually, we haven't got enough women in here, so so we need to recruit that lady. But she might not be as good as those three guys that are there because they're and that's the difficult challenge that you've got is you've got to take the right candidate, not not because you're filling a quota.